Duck, duck, goose. Was that so hard? So B-Link sit over this critter to find out if it knows how to Linux. 10 cores and 12 threads means it's Intel and eight of those cores are efficient. But it's no slouch. Geekbench puts the i5-1235U just above the Ryzen 5 7430U, but the 8745HS edges it out in multi-core performance. This one comes with 32 gigabytes of DDR4 mystery RAM and a Gen 4 one terabyte NVMe from Crucial and a brickless power noodle. PSU's built in, nice. On the back, three USB holes, devoid of useful labeling, 3.2, 3.2, 2.0. Dual one gig ethernet along with HDMI and 3.2 and 10 gig on the front, plus a rubbery power button. And it just so happens Pop OS 2404 just released along with a rust powered cosmic desktop environment experience. It really says that. So why not? Let's give it a shot. I do want to take a peek in the BIOS and check this out. We have our basic system info. Do we, we have options for overclocking. That's pretty wild. A bunch of settings for power management that I'm not even going to bother touching. And of course, our boot options. But let's see if we can get it to pop. The installer is pretty standard. You pick a language, select a drive and nuke it from orbit. Create an account and watch it go. Time for a reboot and we have to go with orange. Hmm. Gnome or KDE? Time for a quick health check. Wi-Fi is detected and connected. Look at it Wi-Fi. Wired Ethernet looks good, but let's check with the iPerf. 940, no complaints there. Bluetooth is temperamental on good days and well, this ain't one. It eventually paired with my Xbox controller, but only after heroic amounts of cutting it off and on again. Couple of accessibility options and hey, zoom. Neat. Gnome and Katie emote at the same time. Unlimited power. Display options is packed with what you would expect. Degree-based orientation. Oh, I don't know if I'm smart enough for that. And it doesn't have any problems whatsoever 4King. And sound does work, but only after I change the output from analog to digital. But you can boop your way to the desired volume. And we do have your standard performance options, along with battery stats for the keyboard. Love to see that. We got a launcher, workspaces, apps, and custom groups. Let's have a look at the file manager. Oh. How many clicks to show hidden? Only two. Beautiful work. Well done. File details pop up over here and that's how you view the file size, huh? You know, I wouldn't mind seeing the remaining disk space somewhere. And connecting over SFTP has a big honking showstopper. No info, just fail. I ended up having to manually accept the key. That could be a bug, but it is connected, but I don't see a way to bookmark it. Does it remember? No. That's unfortunate. I'm gonna copy a 38 gig file to the internal drive just to see if it chokes after a few gigs. Cosmic doesn't seem to be too concerned with displaying transfer speeds, but it doesn't slow to a crawl and finishes at 49%. K-Disk Mark shows 2.6 and 1.9 on the sustained reads and writes using the real world preset, so no complaints there. I almost forgot about the tiled windows. This is neat. Click a button and bam. Oh, look at that tabs and we can move around with a super key which is pretty cool and right back to floating windows with a click app store seems legit we got steam discord and chrome all front and center and look at that jellyfin we'll get to that in a moment plus a special section for applet enthusiast easy access to install apps and updates let's install some apps starting with the obs flat pack i want to see if hardware encoding works just out of the box and we do have Vapian QuickSync, right on. Blender's another application I wanna take a peek at. It works well enough, but you are gonna be doing all of your rendering on the CPU. And DaVinci Resolve launches and detects the Iris Z GPU, but like with Intel UHD integrated graphics, it eventually hangs, requiring a force close. No Linux PC review is complete without a Jellyfin encoding session. X264 and 265 encode and decode work using the VAPI encoder. And we're getting a little over 200 frames per second while transcoding from 4K to 720p. That's more than double that of an Intel N150. Now let's have a quick look at OpenGL and Vulkan performance using the TuxCart built-in benchmark. 
At 1080p, with everything dialed to 11, the Intel Iris Z graphics sit between the Vegas 7 and the 7430U and the 780M in the 8845HS, but it's definitely an upgrade if you're coming from an Intel N150. Can Iris Z handle a 12-year-old racing game at 1080p? Well, if AMD didn't exist, I would call this pretty good for integrated graphics, but it's diving into the 40s. How about HD from 1998? 720p. Yeah, it doesn't have any problem with that. So just grab a 12 inch display and you're golden. We Have Fall Guys at Home is a better story with everything on 11 at 1080p and we're consistently over 100 FPS. And the same goes for the latest installment in the MT Bug franchise. This video isn't sped up, nay. Something went delightfully ripe with a flycast emulator and you absolutely bet I tried, but I couldn't locate the go button on the keyboard. Speed running, not even once. Redream to the rescue, but I still couldn't find the go button, but I did manage to track down the steering. No way around it. Even with a power save governor enabled, we're seeing 10 watts at idle. Flat out, it buzzes up to 60 watts during boost, but we're hovering around 40 watts under sustained load, just under 50C with an all core average around two gigahertz. And it's not shouty at all. So it's definitely got that going for it. We gotta get this out of the way. The Intel CPU doesn't support Blender, DaVinci Resolve, or encoding AV1. But that still leaves you with a snappy desktop PC that can manage a bit of 720p gaming. And if you plan on using it for home lab shenanigans, just remember it uses 10 watts existing. I remember when B-Link PCs were cheap and plasticky, but things have changed. Yeah, it's still plastic, but that can survive a fall. And these rubberized landing strips provide a heroic amount of not slidiness. But there's still one thing to test. Time to NVMe. The amount of time it takes to rip this thing apart and extract the NVMe drive. And we're off. The rubber covers are putting up a bit of a fight, but the screws come right out and there's a block of metal covering the NVMe drives attached with a ribbon cable making this next part difficult. The standoff holding the drive in place required breaking out the needle nose and it's fussy, especially having to hold the heat sink out of the way, but there we go. NVMe on the ground in six minutes, three seconds, and 50 not seconds, putting the B-Link EQ i12 on the letterboard down there. Well, if you're planning on yoinking one of these, but just wanted to know if this B could Linux, good news, it does. I'll put a link in the description and maybe tap the like button on your way down there. And let me know in the comments if you have anything you'd like me to test. And hey, thanks for watching, but that's gonna do it for this one. So get out there and make something awesome.